Sri 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 Mad, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Kaam Bhubhiti Kaam Dachai, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pravidikacharya Satirata Sri Sri Mad, His Divine Grace Srila Bhakta Saranta Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Ananti Kori Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai. Nama Chari Srila Haridas Tokur Ki Jai. Premzika Ho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Chananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Siva Sri Gora Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopina Shama Kunvari Kun Giri Govardhana Ki Jai. Shri Vandavan Dham Ki Jai. Shri Mayapur Navadik Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Nu Dwarka Dham Ki Jai. Jamuna Mai Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Ki Jai. Shri Mati Tosi Devi Ki Jai. Shri Mati Bhakti Devi Ki Jai. Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Govda Premananda Haribo. All glories to assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Sri Guru Angoranga, Jai Srila Prabhupada. Namah Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Savadeh Shemadi Varasa Mitamena Masih Sarasam Dim Gauravani Bichar Nubisih Samasih Varibas Kachala Sitarana. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jai, so we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam today. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9.33 Aham Evasam Evagre Nan yad, yat, sad asat, param, paschad, aham, yad, etach cha, yo, vashishyeta, sho, shmiyaham, aham evasam evagre, Nanyad yad sad asad param Paschad aham yad etach cha Yova shishyeta sosmiyam ham Aham evasam evagre Nanyad yad sad asad param Paschad aham yad etach cha Yovashishyeta shoshmiyaham Aham evasam evagre Nanyad yad sad asad param Paschad aham yad etach cha Yovashishyeta shoshmiyaham Smiyaham Paschadaham Yad Etachcha Yovashishetha Shoshmiyaham Aham evasam evagre Nanyad yat asat spram Paschad aham yat etach cha Yovashishyeta soshmiyaham Nanyad yat asat param Paschad aham yat etach cha Yoba shishyeta soshmiyaham Yoba shishyeta soshmiyaham Vaishnavis Aham evasam evagre Nanyad atsat param 
Paschat aham yat etachcha Yovashisheta soshmyaham Aham evasam eva gre Nanyat evasam Synonyms, aham, I, the personality of Godhead. Eva, certainly. Asam, existed. Eva, only. Agre, before the creation. Na, never. Anyat, anything else. Yat, all those. Sat, the effect. Asat, the cause. Param, the supreme. Paskat, <coughs> at the end. Aham, <coughs> I, the personality of Godhead. <coughs> Yat, all these. Etat, creation. Cha, also, ya, everything, avashishyeta, remains, saha, that, asmi, I am, aham, I, the personality of Godhead. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Brahma, it is I, the personality of Godhead who was existing before the creation, when there was nothing but myself, nor was there the material nature, the cause of this creation. That which you see now is also I, the personality of Godhead, and after annihilation, what remains will also be I, the personality of Godhead. Purport. It's a very lengthy purport, by the way. Really long. So, we'll try to go through it. By the time we have to leave, we we'll try our best. Purport. We should note very carefully that the personality of Godhead is addressing Lord Brahma and specifying with great emphasis himself, pointing out that it is he, the personality of Godhead, who existed before the creation. It is he only who maintains the creation and it is he only who remains after the annihilation of the creation. I really messed up. I didn't say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, did I? Did I say it? I did? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya And now all of you know what kind of day I'm having. And today is just, just the beginning. Okay, continue with purport. Brahma is also a creation of the Supreme Lord. The impersonalist puts forth the theory of oneness in the sense that Brahma, also being the same principle of I, because he is an emanation from the I, the absolute truth, is identical with the Lord the principle of I, and that there is thus nothing more than the principle of I, as explained in the verse, <clears throat> in this verse. Accepting the argument of the impersonalist, it is to be admitted that the Lord is the creator I, and that the Brahma is the created I. Therefore, 
there is a difference between the two eyes, namely the predominator eye and the predominated eye. Therefore, <clears throat> there are still two eyes even accepting the argument of the impersonalist. But we must note carefully that these two eyes are accepted in the Vedic literature, Katopanishad, in the sense of quality. The Katopanishad says, Nicho nichanam chaitanas chaitananam, eko bahunam yo vidadati kaman. The creator eye and the created eye are both accepted in the Vedas as qualitatively one because both of them are nichas and chaitanas. But the singular eye is the creator eye. And the created eyes are of plural number because there are many eyes like Brahma and those generated by Brahma. It is a simple truth. The father creates or begets a son and the son also creates many other sons. And all of them may be one as human beings, but at the same time, from the father, the son, and the grandsons are all different. The son cannot take the place of the father, nor can the grandsons. Simultaneously, the father, the son, and the grandson are one and different also. As human beings, they are one. But as relativities, they are different. Therefore, the relativities of the creator and the created or the predominator and the predominated have been differentiated in the Vedas by saying that the predominator I is the feeder of the predominated eyes. And thus, there is a vast difference between the two principles of I. Now, that's just the beginning. And later on, there's so many other things that Srila Prabhupada says in his purport that are so powerful. But um, just on this particular port, point, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mamai Bamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Mana Sasindriyani Prakritistani Karshati. Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita that the living entities <clears throat> in this conditional world are my eternal fragmental parts. This is very important because there, this particular verse gives the identity of the living entity. <clears throat> Due to conditional life, and this is us in this material world, we're fragments of Krishna and we're living in this world and we're uh, under conditional life and we're struggling very hard with the six senses which includes the mind. So I thought this verse gave a real identity of the living entity those of us are living in this material world. And it, it describes that we're fragmental parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we'll always be that. We'll always be fragmented. Uh, even in our conditioned state, uh, we'll always be uh, fragmental parts. We'll never become individual or produce like individuality as we want to do. We always want to create individuality. But because we're fragmental parts of the Supreme Lord, that won't exist because we're servants of Krishna. This is our constitutional position, that we're servants. We can't be individual or separate. And even when we come to that point of a liberated state, uh, we won't become one with Krishna. Uh, we're eternally fragmented. So that, I thought, was very important, that we understand that we are who we are for eternally. We're fragmental parts of Krishna. And we'll never get out of that position of being a servant of Krishna. We, have, we don't have this so-called individuality that we're searching for because we're conditioned souls. So another point in that verse that was very nice was karshati. The word karshati actually means like struggling or grappling, you know, two wrestlers fighting. You know, if you've ever seen a wrestling match, they're grappling with each other. They're wrestling. And they're working really hard to be the dominator. So we see that uh, we're bound up like this. We're shackled like as if we're, you know, have chains on us by this false ego and the mind. The false ego, the six senses, the false ego. And we're actually grappling with these things constantly. There's a wrestling match every day. 
um, I was having a pretty severe wrestling match this morning myself. And, uh, you know, it can be very struggling. It's a struggle and it's very difficult. And no matter how hard you work, you can't seem to get over that hump. So this is the nature of the conditioned soul in this material world. And a, a, a great example is our Bhagavad Gita Museum. If you go in there, you see the chariot of the mind. And there you'll see that, you know, the struggle that goes on. The mind is out of control. And the soul behind there is just freaking out. What, the, what are you doing? You're driving us crazy. So this is what's going on for us in this material world who are conditioned uh, and we're teeny fragmental parts of Krishna eternally. And we'll never really have that uh, so-called individuality that we're searching for, which is based on a bodily platform of life or mental speculation. Our real position is that we're servants of Krishna and that is our real happiness. This is the future of happiness for all of us uh, if we want it. Okay, going on. In another feature of this verse, no one can deny the personalities of both the Lord and Brahma. Therefore, in the ultimate issue, both the predominator and the predominated are persons. This conclusion refutes the conclusion of the impersonalist that in the ultimate issue, everything is impersonal. This impersonal feature stressed by the less intelligent impersonalist school is refuted by pointing out that the predominator I is the absolute truth and that he is a person. The predominated I, Brahma, is also a person, but he is not the absolute. For realization of oneself in spiritual psychology, it may be convenient to assume oneself to be the same principle as the absolute truth, but there is always a difference of the predominated and the predominator. As clearly pointed out here in this verse, which is grossly misused by the impersonalists, Brahma is factually seeing face to face his predominator Lord, <clears throat> who exists in his transcendental eternal form even after the annihilation of the material creation. The form of the Lord, as seen by Brahma, existed before the creation of Brahma and the material manifestation with all the ingredients and agents of material creation are also energetic expansions of the Lord. And after the exhibition of the Lord's energy comes to a close, what remains is the same personality of Godhead. Therefore, the form of the Lord exists in all circumstances of creation, maintenance, and annihilation. The Vedic hymns confirm this fact in the statement, Vasudevo va idam agra ashin asinna brahma nacha shankar Eko Narayana Asinna Brahma Neshana, etc. Before the creation, there was none except Vasudev. There was neither Brahma nor Shankar. Only Narayana was there and no one else, neither Brahma nor Ishana. Sripad Sankaracharya also confirms in his comments on the Bhagavad Gita that Narayana, or the personality of Godhead, is transcendental to all creation, but that the whole creation is the product of, of yakta. Therefore, the difference between the created and the creator is always there, although both the creator and the created are the same quality. So I was looking at this word of yakta. I think what, what Papa describes as the unmanifested. So us living entities are living in a particular situation. And according to our desire, we're waiting to get that particular body according to our activity. So this whole creation is going on because of our desire to be lords, to control, be controller, to enjoy. So in this unmanifestation, unmanifested stages of yakta, and uh, as soon as it's our, our, our time to become uh, created in this world according to our activities, then we come out of that particular situation. Um, there's a nice uh, verse, Mayajakchena prakriti suyate sacha rachanam hetunane nukuntaya jagat viparivartate. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's described that the material nature, <clears throat> which is uh, one of Krishna's energies, 
This material energy is just one of his energies. And it's working under his direction, Krishna's direction. Uh, and he's producing all moving and non-moving beings. And under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So this kind of fits the particular verse, uh, or what we're reading here in the purport. And uh, it, it kind of shows the position of who Krishna is and who the living entities are. And due to our uh, desire to lord it over, to become freed from Krishna's uh, grip, we want to enjoy this material world. So we're put in a situation where there's creation and annihilation constantly. And uh, although this creation is there, uh, Krishna is actually aloof uh, from this material world and its activities. He really doesn't come down and become involved. But at the same time, he's still the supreme director. He controls everything. And the material nature is the management. The material nature manages, and we can see how that works. The sun comes up every day. Every day it comes up. Uh, the seasons are there. Spring, there's summer, there's fall, there's winter. All these things are happening. And if you ask someone, well, what's going on? How is this happening? They'll say it's natural. But this is the illusion. Uh, it's, it's, it's natural only because Krishna has set it in motion. Uh, an example of that would be like a computer. All of us, we deal with computers. And the computer can give you so much information. But somebody has to put that information in the computer. Somebody has to put that there. Some living entity has to put that information there. So this material world is going on naturally. But it's managing itself. But the ingredient is Krishna. Krishna, the supreme controller, has programmed this. Aham bija pada pita. Krishna says, I'm the seed giving father of all living entities, of everything, moving and non moving. And uh, he instills the management within the material world, the material nature. And just like, uh, as we said, the computer, you can see sometimes a microchip has so much information. It's actually bewildering. You think, how can they put so much? knowledge in a little computer chip. How is that possible? How do they do this? It's phenomenal. But you can imagine what Krishna does. You can take a little seed and you can put that seed in the ground and if you nurture it properly, you'll see a big banyan tree will come. If you've ever seen a banyan tree, sometimes banyan trees, their roots go for miles. And how is it that this seed this tiny seed can create such a huge uh, tree. There's some programming going on in the seed. And who does that programming? Except for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is who's doing everything. And yes, we may see it going natural. We don't even think about it. You know, they like to develop horror movies about if the sun went away from its axis for you know, a few inches. If, if, this, if, you know, the sun moved, what would happen? Everybody would be fried, cooked. Or if it went away too far back, everybody would freeze. So they like to make these ideas. But really, because it's under the control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there's nothing we're going to do about it. It's up to Krishna and his management through the material nature. So uh, we see that... Uh, Due to this lack of knowledge, there has been so many misunderstandings. And uh, not because Krishna wants it that way, because of the living entity. It's, it's, it's the grossly foolish, uh, the, the really obstinate, grossly foolish people. Param, is param bhavam ajananto. What is that? Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram, right? Yes, okay. So it says that, Krishna says that they deride me when I come to this world in my, my manifested form. They deride me because they don't have any understanding of who Krishna is. And so they don't understand his transcendental nature as being the supreme personality of Godhead. So Krishna is the creator, 
he maintains, he annihilates, he actually, uh, uh, you know, he's the complete uh, controller of this manifestation, as we're reading in here. And uh, Brahma, who's having this conversation with him, yesterday, Brahma was shaking hands, or was the day before, he was shaking hands with Krishna in the purport. And uh, Brahma says, Ishvara Parama Krishna, such sit Ananda Vigraha. He's uh, directly speaking with uh, Lord Krishna. He's shaking hands with Lord Krishna. He's hearing instruction from Lord Krishna. And his conclusion is, Brahma's conclusion is, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you can't be just an ordinary human being to create all this, to manifest all that we see, and to control the sun, and the, and, and the weather, and, and the uh, you know, seasons. That's inconceivable. So it, it's not an ordinary human being. And Lord Brahma uh, reiterates that, that he's not. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. The other feature of the statement is that the Supreme Truth is Bhagavan, or the Personality of Godhead. The Personality of Godhead and His Kingdom have already been explained. The Kingdom of Godhead is not void as conceived by the impersonalists. The Vaikuntha planets are full of transcendental variegatedness, including the four-handed residents of those planets with great opulence of wealth and prosperity. And there are even airplanes and other amenities required for high-grade personalities. Therefore, the personality of Godhead exists before the creation and he exists with all transcendental variegatedness in the Vaikuntha Lokas. The Vaikuntha Lokas are also, uh, Vaikuntha Lokas also accepted in the Bhagavad Gita as being the Sanatana nature are not annihilated even after the annihilation of the manifested cosmos. Those transcendental planets are of a different nature altogether and that nature is not subjected to the rules and regulations of material creation, maintenance or annihilation. The existence of the Personality of Godhead implies the existence of the Vaikuntha Lokas as the existence of a king implies the existence of a kingdom. In various places in Srimad Bhagavatam and in other revealed scriptures, the existence of the Personality of Godhead is mentioned. For example, in the Srimad Bhagavatam 2.8.10, Maharaj Pariksit asks, Sachapi Yatra Purusho Vishvashtit Yud Bhava Yayaha Muktvatma Mayam Mayeshaha Sete Sarva Guha Shayaha. How does the Personality of Godhead, the cause of creation, maintenance, and annihilation, who is always freed from the influence of the illusory energy and is the controller of the same, lie in everyone's heart. Similar also is the question of Viduras. Tattva nam bhagavam stesam katida pratishankrama tatre mam ka upasiran ka yusvid anusayurate. Shima Bhagavatam 3, 737. Sridhar Swami explains this in his notes. During the annihilation of the creation who serves the Lord lying on the Sesha, etc. This means that the transcendental Lord with all his name, fame, quality and paraphernalia exists eternally. The same confirmation is also in the Kasi Kanda of the Skanda Purana in connection with Dhruva Charita. It is said there Nachayvante piyad bhakta mahyam pralaya padi ato chuto kile loke sa eka sarvago viaya. Even the devotees of the personality of Godhead are not annihilated, <clears throat> are not annihilated during the period of the entire annihilation of the material world, not to speak of the Lord Himself. The Lord is ever-existent in all three stages of material change. The impersonalist adduces no activity in the Supreme, but in this discussion between Brahma and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord is said to have activities also, as He has His form and quality. The activities of the Brahma and other demigods during the maintenance of the creation are to be understood as the activities of the Lord. 
the king or the head executive of a state may not be seen in the government offices, for he may be engaged in royal comforts. Yet it should be understood that everything is being done under his direction, and everything is at his command. The personality of Godhead is never formless. In the material world, he may not be visible in his personal form to the less intelligent class of men, and therefore he may sometimes be called formless. But actually, he is always in his eternal form in his Vaikuntha planets, as well as in other planets of the universes at different incarnations. The example of the sun is very appropriate in this connection. The sun in the night may not be visible to the eyes of men in the darkness, but the sun is visible wherever it has risen. That the sun is not visible to the eyes of the inhabitants of a particular part of the earth does not mean that the sun has no form. In the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad 141, there is the hymn, Atmai Vedam Agra Asit Purusha Vida. This mantra indicates the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, even before the appearance of the Purusha incarnation. In the Bhagavad Gita 15.18, it is said that Lord Krishna is Purushottama because he is the Supreme Purusha, transcendental even to the Purusha Akshara and the Purusha Kshara. The Akshara Purusha, or the Mahavishnu, throws his glance over Prakriti, or material nature, but the Purushottama existed even before that. The Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad therefore confirms the statement of the Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna is a supreme person, person Purushottama. In some of the Vedas, it is also said that in the beginning, only the impersonal Brahman existed. However, according to this verse, the impersonal Brahman, which is the glowing effulgence of the body of the Supreme Lord, may be called the immediate cause. But the cause of all causes, or the remote cause, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord's impersonal feature is existent in the material world because by material senses, our material eyes, the Lord cannot be seen or perceived. <clears throat> one has to spiritualize the senses before one can expect to see or perceive the Supreme Lord. Ah, so, jai, wow. On that particular note, um, there is that verse, Atasi Krishna Namadi, Nabhavet Graham Indriyai, Seva Mukhi Javado Svayam Evas Purat Yada. And that verse is, describes that the material senses can appreciate the holy name, the pastimes, <clears throat> the qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But when the conditioned soul comes in contact with uh, Krishna consciousness and renders service uh, by using the tongue to chant the holy name Hare Krishna or taking Krishna Pasadam, then one becomes purified. And by that purification, one can come to the play, a point of knowing who Krishna is. So this is a little something there about that particular verse. Okay. Continuing, but he is always engaged in his personal capacity and he is eternally visible to the inhabitants of Vaikuntha Loka, eye to eye. Therefore, he is materially impersonal just as the executive head of the state may be impersonal in the government offices, although he is not impersonal in the government house. Similarly, the Lord is not impersonal, impersonal in his abode, which is always Nirasta Kuhakam, as stated in the very beginning of the Bhagavatam. Therefore, both the impersonal and personal features of the Lord are acceptable, as mentioned in the revealed scriptures. This personality of Godhead is very emphatically explained in the Bhagavad Gita in connection with the verse Brahmanohi Pratishtaham, Bhagavad Gita 427. Therefore, in all ways, the confidential part of spiritual knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead and not his impersonal Brahman feature. 
One should therefore have his ultimate aim of realization, realization not in the impersonal feature, but in the personal feature of the absolute truth. The example of the sky within the pot and the sky outside the pot may be helpful to the student for his realization of the all-pervading quality of the cosmic consciousness of the absolute truth. But that does not mean that the individual part and parcel of the Lord becomes the supreme by false claim. It means only that the conditioned soul is a victim of the illusory energy in her last snare. To claim to be one with the cosmic consciousness of the Lord is the last trap set by the illusory energy or Daivi Maya. Even in the impersonal existence of the Lord as it is in the material creation, one should aspire for personal realization of the Lord. And that is the meaning of Paschad Aham Yad Etats Chayo Vashish Yeta Soshmin Yaham. Brahmaji also accepted the same truth when he was instructing Narada. He said, <clears throat> So yam te bibhitas tata bhagavan vishva bhavanaha. There is no other cause of all causes than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari. Therefore, this verse, Aham Eva, never indicates anything other than the Supreme Lord. And one should therefore follow the path of Brahma Sampradaya or the path from Brahmaji to Narada to Vyasadeva, etc. And make it a point in life to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, or Lord Krishna. This very confidential instruction to the pure devotees of the Lord was also given to Arjuna and to Brahma in the beginning of the creation. <clears throat> the demigods like Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar, Indra, Chandra, and Varuna are undoubtedly different forms of the Lord for execution of different functions. The different elemental ingredients of material creation as well as the multifarious energies also may be of the same personality of Godhead, but the root of all of them is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. One should be attached to the root of everything rather than bewildered by the branches and leaves. That is the instruction given in this verse. So, Acha. Yomam evam samam asamudo janati purushottamam sasarva vir bhajati mam sarva bhavena bharata. It's described in that particular verse that whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without doubting, is the knower of everything. He therefore engages in full Krishna conscious devotional service unto me, O son of Bharat. So basically, in the end, this is what Prabhupada is saying, that uh, if we know Krishna, we know everything. And we've, given, we've been given that opportunity to know Krishna. But of course, uh, there is a recommended process. Sarvapati vinir muktap tap parat vena nirmalam Rishike and Rishike should save in a bhakti uchate. And that process is that bhakti means engaging all the senses in the service of Krishna to the Lord Krishna, <clears throat> who's the master of the senses. And when, we, uh, when the spirit soul actually gets involved in devotional service, there's two side effects. One side effect is that one uh, gets rid of upadi, all the designations of the self. We, we, we understand, we come to that level that we're not this body. And the second one is that the senses become purified. And in the beginning we were saying how hard the living entity works, uh, struggling very hard with the senses, including the mind. So it's a fight. But here it's, it's, it's stated by Srila Prabhupada that by just pursuing, making an uh, effort to understand the personal form of the personality of Godhead by devotional service, uh, we can come to that point. Uh, it's also said, Prabhupada has said that uh, in Krishna consciousness, uh, we have to be very careful because one of the most important uh, negativities is the weakness of the heart. This is a very important, I, I just, just recently read that. We're talking, Papa was talking about the, the weakness of the heart. And so when he said the weakness of the heart, he was saying that the desire to lord it over the material nature is the first cause of weakness of heart. That we want to control the material nature, the material world. And then Prabhupada said that the second point of this weakness of heart 
is that we actually uh, increase the propensity for wanting to control the material energy. And by that propensity of increasing it and wanting it more and more, uh, we become attached to matter. We become attached to matter and the possession of matter. And I thought that was such a brilliant, I mean, it's so potent. You can just see that we're all struggling with that. Uh, you know, we all want to control our situation and we want to control this or we want to control that. But the downside of it is that if we have this controlling nature and we uh, continue with it, Prabhupada said that one will give up devotional service. We'll give it up. And then what will solidify it is that if we continue with that propensity more and more, then we become seriously attached to the material world and everything around us. And Papa says, he used the word matter. And we know how that is. We have, the, you know, there's family, there's friends, there's uh, work, there's desire for gain, uh, there's money, uh, possessions. Uh, so this control factor is a very uh, serious uh, process in the execution of Krishna consciousness. And Papa calls it, he, he uses the word, weakness of heart. So we have to be very careful. And if we are careful and we engage in devotional service and we give everything we can to, uh, to serve Krishna consciousness, then we can overcome this weakness of heart and we can actually become devotees and maybe even pure devotees. I'm way over. Thank you very much for your time. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.